afternoon. Just about to go drilling. Um, I'm putting in some spring barley, malting variety called Planet this afternoon to make beer with. I'm just, uh, I've got a few trials to do in this field um, to try and test the uh, um, a phosphate availability trial basically. See if we can get away from using a lot of uh, phosphate um, fertilizers across the field and use a more targeted approach with some alternative products. I'll just show you what they are. So, uh, in this hopper here I've got the blue things are slug pellets and I've mixed them with uh, this product called Biolite which um, is made from volcanic rock dust and unicorn poo or something. So I'm going to try a tram line of that, uh, the Biolite stuff and then I've got uh, some crystal green to try um, and some primary pea and these are all going to be targeted products that we'll put down with the seed and also I have some of this which is uh, another pot of magic mystery PC25 which is a phosphate solubizing bacteria and hopefully is a more natural solution so if we can make the, uh, the, uh, the PC25 work um, that would be absolutely brilliant so we can get away from using fertilizers and just use some natural bacteria to fix phosphate in the soil and give it to the plant as it's growing and uh, there's the barley in the drill press on so the idea of this cover crop is to is to protect the soil over winter as well as try and condition it mop up nutrients and and what have you over the winter but the trouble is this year um, the winter has just been so wet i don't really think we've had the desired effect um, it's it's quite thin. We had a lot of mustard in the mix this year because I was uh, I was being a bit mean. Wanted to have lots of plants, but uh, not so much cost. So I used mustard seed, which is cheap. But the mustard grew very tall. Um, it's here about about waist high here, and um, it sort of swamped out quite a lot of the other species that were in the mix as well. So it's quite bare underneath. Um, it's gone hard right on the crust of the surface, but it's very wet into it, um, which is not ideal at all. And you can see here the drill. The drill is leaving it quite slotty, um, which is not really what we desire in the spring. And because the slots aren't quite closed, and I'm a, I'm a bit fearful that with the weather we quite often get dry springs, I'm going to just, um, I've, I've, I've made sure it's going in there quite deep. Um, and you can see it underneath here, hopefully. There's a bit of seed there, so that's... That's in there a, a, a good inch and a half, inch and three quarters deep, I should think. Um, and hopefully away from drying out. What we would rather, rather than smearing this surface, we'd much rather see a nice crumbly bit of dry soil against it. So it's absolutely not ideal. Um, but I don't think, to be honest, this year we're ever going to get ideal conditions for drilling. Um, and look, you can see here, look, this slot here, you can actually see the, the slug pellet, the blue pellet in the bottom there which will protect the seed, hopefully. A slug comes along, it sees that nice little trench and thinks, oh, I'll go along here and eat all the seed, but hopefully it'll get to that pellet and eat it and then uh, die. Um, we might even run the rolls over this just to try and close up the slot. You can hear a skylark singing above me. He quite fancies the, uh, the cover crop. That is one of the big benefits of these crops over winter is that, uh, especially the mustard here, you can see it had a lot of pods on it, um, which have had seed in them. Hopefully the birds have eaten it all over winter because I don't really want the mustard growing in the uh, in the next crop. But we shall see what happens. Um, this was sprayed off at the end of February. This piece. Um, I'm just going to set up the the box and unfold the drill, um, and then we'll be away. So this is the control box on my weaving drill. I'm just loading up a uh, variable rate seed map here. Um, this is a map of the field, and you can see that I want to put a uh, more seed around the headland, the end, edges of the field, um, which is why they're blue. So that rate's going to be 254 kilos a hectare. There's a nice little bit of land in a, in a swale at the bottom of the hill over there. Um, that's a nice bit, grows quite well in there, so we're going to put a lot less on there, 193 kilos. So we, we load that map up, and then as I drive across the field, the drill will automatically change the rate um, at which I put on the seed. And then I'm going to put the uh, the other applicator where I put the uh, the magic muck and mystery biolite product, and that's going to go on at 40 kilos a hectare just for this this tram line. And then I'll change over the products. The auto steer is ready to go to guide me in a straight line. So happy days. So now the auto steer has taken over for me. That's just guiding me up this pass here. Oh, get in focus. So you can see that I've been up this pass and I've been down this pass, and we've got this one. 
we're drilling into a sprayed off cover crop um, so we put a crop in here with uh, nine different species back in the summer and uh, that's just been growing over winter the idea of that is to try and condition the soil um, add some nutrition to it we've got some legume species in the mix which um, hopefully fix some nitrogen um, but more importantly the cover crop soaks up a lot of the nutrients that might otherwise be washed away over winter um, and they get stored within the crop the big unknown thing is that when those nutrients will be released to the following crop um, and we've actually got a trial in the field just over the other side of the hill um, which we're hoping to try and uh, try and put some meat on the bones with when that nutrition becomes available. Um, as I'm driving across the field here you can see my uh, my verbal rate box here so I've got the seed and the uh, and the pellets in, in this case it's slug pellets mixed with this BioLite product. Um, I've got forward speed of just under eight kilometers an hour and a fan speed there of 4800 rpm and what the fan is doing you can't quite see it because it's underneath the, the hopper of the machine but as the seed is metered out, it blows the seed, the fan blows the speed through those tubes, you can see just behind that wheel, and then it drops down um, into those coulters and uh, into the ground.